taking into consideration uh, uh, a topic titled Concord. But before I move on, let me just try to share my screen with us so we can take a look of, uh, okay, all right. So in our class today, we shall be treating what we call principles of concord, principles of concord. Like I used to tell us, before we take anything into consideration concerning a topic, uh, we need to understand the contextual meaning of, uh, of such uh, topic. So as today we call this concord, Concord from the word concord is coined to connote agreements between a subject and a verb. Concord means agreement, to agree, to have uh, a tandem agreement. So, and the word concord, as, for, as coined from that concord, means the agreement uh, as we use it in the context of uh, this principle. It means the agreement between the subject and the a sentence. Uh, you need to understand that not only noun can serve as a subject, but also we have pronoun, adjective, and in some cases, adverbs that can serve as subjects. So this can this topic, or let me say this understanding of adjective, pronoun, verb, adverb can serve as a uh, Subject, we can see that in the understanding of a topic we call nominalization. So in that topic, you see instances where verb itself can serve as a subject. It can, it can play the role of a noun. We also have adjective adverb, which can also play the role of a noun. But that is not our major concern for today. Our major concern is to see how a verb and a subject can have a tandem agreement to form a meaningful sentence. So from this, uh, the basic principle of concord, you know, there's, there's no way uh, a, a verb can have agreements with a subject if principles are not taken into consideration. So we have various principles that govern the use of concord, but the basic one, which I also call, according to my study, as the principle, uh, the basic principle rather is the, the, the principle of subject verb concord, subject and verb concord. And the basic principle of concord, which is subject and verb concord, uh, states that when the subject of a sentence is, is singular, then the verb should also be singular as well. And vice versa. So vice versa in the sense that if the subject is plural, then automatically the verb of the sentence should be plural as well. So this is how we derive the formula we call uh, subjects over subjects, that's singular subjects equals to singular verb. So this is uh, the, 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 the formula from it, uh, single, that's S over S, which is singular subjects. That's this S over S just connotes singular subjects. So singular subject is equals to singular verb. So wherever you see singular subject act, acting as the principal subject of that sentence, then you must use singular verb for it, for that uh, corresponding singular subject. And also wherever you see plural subjects acting as a principal subject of that uh, sentence, then a plural verb must be used to correspond it. So plural nouns, uh, uh, please, uh, before we continue, we all, we need to understand the structures of plural subjects and plural uh, nouns. It's not that we should just uh, uh, take the, the, the if a feeble frame of saying, okay, plural subjects and plural verbs are whatever verbs and nouns that have S, no. Uh, if you look at this diagram, this diagram uh, illustrates how singular and plural nouns can be. And as well, it illustrates uh, the structure of singular verb and plural verb. So let's take the first one, uh, uh, let's consider the first one. So let's deal with nouns. If you can see this place that we said, plural nouns can be formed by adding S, E, S, and I, E, S to their singular forms. But for verbs, when verbs have S, 
ES or IES at the front, such verbs are singular. So now let's take now this uh, singular, singular nouns. We have examples of singular nouns like girl, bag, village, boy, basket, biro, book, table, school, phone, etc., etc. Why the plural uh, form of it of them will be girls. The plural form of girl is girls. Why the plural form of uh, bag is bag. The plural form of village is villages. The plural form of boy is boys. The plural form of school is schools. The plural form of pen is pens. The plural form of book is books. The plural form of uh, house is houses. So etc. like that. So a noun, wherever uh, a noun has the suffix of s, es, or iex, then it is what? Plural. But when a noun does not have any suffix of x, ex, or iex, then such noun is singular. So now let's consider verb. Singular verb is at this side, where we have plural verb at this axis. All right, so sing. Let's see the plural form of sings. Now, singular is sing, while the plural is, and the plural singular is sings, rather, while the plural is sing. Also, contains is the singular form, while the plural form is contain. Governs is a singular why the plural is what govern uh work work is plural why the singular is what works works now these plural verbs in english we also call them b verb b e verbs so these b verbs are also always plural in nature they are always plural in nature but when you ask when you add suffix to them like uh E S S or I E S, then they become what singular. They become singular. So you we need to understand how uh, singular and plural forms of nouns and verb are put before we can have uh, a very great understanding of concord. All right. So let's move to the next slide where we have uh, uh, other principles. Where we have other principles. But we need to also uh, consider this, the example of uh, uh, this basic principle, which I call subject and verb concord. So the basic principle states that wherever the subject of a sentence is singular, it takes singular verb. And wherever the subject is plural, it takes plural verb. For instance, are there things in the church? Are there things in the church? Ade is singular, Why sings is what? Singular verb. Ade is the uh, principal subject, is the subject of the sentence there, and therefore uh, it should attract a singular, a corresponding singular verb. Ade sings in the church. They eat rice to school every day. They eat rice to school every day. They is the pronoun there, and it is, uh, it is plural in nature. So uh, the, 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 the verb that must be uh, attached to it must also be plural in nature. So that is why they eat instead of eats, not eats, they eat. Eat is a plural form of eats. So uh, that is an example. Also, let me use, let's use this uh, table as examples each. Uh, the bag contains red balls. The bag contains red ball. The bag contains red balls. Now, bag is singular. Then contains must be used to read. Bag is singular and it must attract a corresponding singular verb. The bag contains red balls. Also, uh, the boy governs the class. The boy governs the class. The boy governs 
the class. So boy is singular, governs is also singular. Now let's take the plural of this. The boys govern the class. You can say that the boys, the boys govern the class. The boys govern. So this is plural and it must take corresponding plural verbs. So those are uh, uh, examples of the basic principles. All right, so let's move to the other principles. So let's see other principles of Concord. Where we have first, that's number one, principles of proximity. Now this principle, okay, let me just, let's understand what proximity means itself. Proximity means closeness or nearness. When we say uh, the school is a uh, proxim to my house, that is, it is very near to my house. So proximity means nearness or closeness. So where, which of these uh, nouns or pronouns is near to the verb? So that is what we must take into consideration in this principle. So when there's a list of nouns, pronouns, adverbs, or adjectives at the subject level, look at this, the nearest noun, pronoun, or adverb, or adjective to the verb, we determine the kind of verb to be chosen. When we say proximity means nearness, in this case, we check the subjects of the sentence that is mostly nearest or uh, that is nearest to the, uh, to the verb. So it is that subject that is very close to the verb that will determine the kind of verb we have to choose. Now, mind you, this kind of uh, when uh, subjects are listed in this kind of principle, they don't use conjunctive uh, word like and. In this case, they use uh, or, 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 nor, n o r, nor. Okay, so when we, when we study this further, we, we get there. So uh, the word proximity simply means closeness or nearness, like I've said earlier. So when two or more subjects are listed with the use of comma or with either, with, with either or, or, or neither or no, the verb to be used will be determined by the subject nearest to the verb. I've explained this earlier. So the subject that comes after the no or, or will determine the kind of verb to be chosen. I mean, to be chosen rather. So example one, let's see example one here. If today performs poorly in his forthcoming examination, then either her mother or I am to blame. Now look at this, look at this, I am. Now in some uh, examinations, uh, this place or this, this place for verb will be left vacuum for us to determine the kind of verb to be included in that place. If today performs poorly in this forthcoming examination, then the mother or I dash to blame or to be blamed. So in this case, you have to choose which verb best fills that place. And you can be given options like is, are, am, was. So you have to discern correctly which one fills, uh, which of the verbs of the options correctly fills that, uh, that vacuum. And if you want to notice that, you must apply the principle of proximity that we said here. This is this the nearest uh, subject is I. The nearest subject is I. That's pronoun I. So an I does not go, cannot go with was. It cannot go with a. It cannot go with is. So the best form of verb to be applied to that I is am because it is uh, present continuous. It is present continuous. So, and it is I, not past tense. So, so that is uh, the principle there. That's the application of the principle. Also, example two, uh, in my opinion, neither the players nor the coach does praise for the result of the match. So here we have a vacuum, that's a, a space to be filled. And the question reads, in my opinion, neither the players nor the coach does praise for the result of the match. A, they save. 
B, the saves. C, the save. D, are the seven. So you have to discern of these four options, which one best fills uh, the vacuum, the line there. So applying this principle of proximity, the nearest uh, subject to the verb here, this to this space here, is the coach, which is singular, which is singular. So, uh, sorry. Okay, so the, the nearest now there is the coach, which is singular in nature. And such, you must uh, pick a corresponding singular verb to match that sentence. So, so that is why the saves is chosen there. Also, example three, either Tayo or our brothers are right. Either Tayo or our brothers are right. Her brothers is the nearest uh, subject to the verb are uh, here. So that is why are, uh, that's plural subject is chosen to that sentence. So that is the application of that principle, principle of proximity. So let's note there's uh, an exemption here. Okay, let, there's something to note here, which we, we said only a subject and not an object can come after or, or no in a sentence. For instance, it's wrong to say neither Abigail nor him is right. Because uh, if you if you can remember from our last class, which we call comparing and, comparison and consistency, we say that it is not possible to compare between a subject and an object. So this principle is now is now putting into consideration a subject and an object, which is wrong. Neither Abigail nor him. Him is an objective pronoun. So you don't you don't use uh, him with Abigail here because Abigail here, Abigail here is subjective, is, is a subject. So that is what we are talking about here. But rather you see, neither Abigail nor he is right. Can you see that? So uh, we mostly make this uh, uh, error in our day to day uh, construction. So we need to understand this. All right, so because of our time, let's move to uh, the next slide. Let's move to the, to the, next, the next slide. So we have two principles on this slide. The concord, the double title subject concord. So in this principle, we have two subjects serving as one. Two subjects, or let me say, uh, the subjects are used in adjective form, that is describing one person with two terms. Okay, let's see what the principle has to do with, uh, has to tell us. All right, uh, when two subjects are joined together with this conjunction and, you know, and is a conjunction. All right, so when the subjects, when two subjects are joined with conjunction and, but the two subjects refer to only one person or thing. That is, the two joint subjects stand for one person or thing. Then a singular verb should be used in the sentence. For instance, I'm, uh, I'm an English teacher in JCSF. And also, I may be uh, the coordinator. So I am an English teacher and also I'm, an I'm, I'm a coordinator to the uh, to JCSF. So in that case, the two terms are describing me. They are describing me. So you can say that. So uh, in this case, the two terms are for me. So they are still talking about me, myself. So which means one singular verb must be used for me and not a plural verb. Please, someone is trying to talk there. Can I hear you? May I ask if you can hear me very well, audibly? Hello? Sorry, can I ask if uh, I'm communicating with you guys? Yes, sir, we can hear you. All right, all right, uh, let's further. So according to that principle, let's see some uh, practical examples as displayed on our screen. Our principal and chairman of the occasion, 
dash just arrived. Now let's assume that this place is a vacuum. So we need to fill it with uh, available varieties of, uh, of choices. So our principal and chairman of the occasion, the principal is the same as the chairman of the occasion. So these two are qualifying just one person. So in this sense, we are still describing the same person, though the two uh, subjects are connected with conjunction and. Irregardless, we are talking about one person. So in this case, uh, we, 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 we attend to use singular uh, verb, oh, sorry. We attend to use singular verb for the uh, sentence. So which reads correctly that a principal, which is also the chairman of the occasion has just arrived. Can we say that? So that is the application of this double title subject concord. A principal and chairman of the occasion has just arrived. Has is a singular verb. So here, our principal and chairman indicates one person. The principal is the same as the chairman of the occasion. So that is that. So example two, the founder and pastor of my church is hard working. The founder and pastor of my church is hard working. So here also, the founder is the same as the pastor of my church. So in this sense, is as a singular verb should also be used. So example three is again, uh, practically make use of this principle like, uh, like we have been describing. The president and executive head is a wise man. The president is the same as the executive head. So we are still describing the same person. So in this sense, singular verb should be used. So that is uh, the, uh, the use of double title subject concord. When we say double title, it means one person bearing two titles, so two subjects describing uh, one person. So that is that. All right, so uh, thirdly, mandative subjunctive concord, mandative subjunctive concord. So this is where we have, uh, I tie to it, the big five principle, the big five principle. This rule takes an exemption from the basic rule of concord that says a singular subject must take a singular verb and vice versa. So you can remember, can remember our, our, our basic principle, which we say is the basic uh, for all other principles, which says singular verb must take singular verb and plural verb and plural subject rather, plural subjects must take plural verb. But in this case, when prayer, wish, suggestion, recommendation, or resolution. That is why I call them the, uh, the big five. This when prayer, wish, suggestion, recommendation, or resolution appears in a sentence. When any of these five appears in a sentence, a plural verb should be used, even when the subject of the sentence is singular. Now, you should also note in that, that in some examinations, this big five, any of this big five might not appear, but any word that can stand or connote any of them might be used for you under this principle. So whenever the, any of these five words is used or any way that connotes any of these five words is used, uh, plural verb must be used for that sentence. Any word that suggests the meaning of any of these aforementioned words is used. When any of them is used, a plural verb should also be used. For instance, let's see the example. I wish he resigned his post in the office. Now, this is the working verb here. I wish he resigned. But the way we use it uh, in our contemporary construction, we can say, I wish he resigns his post. That is wrong, very, very wrong. When you pray for something or when you wish for something, that, uh, when you are using it in the sentence, you, you must use it with plural verb. So look, let's, let's see this second example. We pray God deliver him from the hands of the wicked. 
not God delivers him. Not we pray God delivers him. So when, now look at this first one. Wish is used. Pray is used. Then the third one recommended. That's recommendation. So when any of these five ways that we mentioned in this descriptive are part of the principle is used, then plural verb must be used for them. I wish he sing in the church, not he sings in the church. I wish he sing in the church tomorrow. I pray God uh, make me uh, wish, I mean, see tomorrow. I wish God make me see tomorrow. Not I wish God makes me. No, that's wrong. So that is the principle of mandative, subjunctive, concord. So that is that. So please, uh, alongside the class, wherever you have questions, judge your question. After the class, we can treat them. All right, so let's see the, uh, some other principles here. A pair of concord, a pair of. So this one is used when you uh, see sentences that begin with a pair of. A pair of socks, a pair of trousers, a pair of glasses, a pair, a pair of hand gloves. Like that. So wherever you see them, the principles state that uh, a plural subject should be used. I mean, so a plural subject will be used with the appear of and then singular verb working for it. That's what this list reads. When a pair of is used, a plural subject must be used for it. And then it must be attract. I mean, it must attract a singular verb. For instance, it is wrong to see a pair of hand glove, a pair of hand glove. No, it is wrong. And also, it is wrong to say a pair of hand glove. Uh, a pair of hand gloves are on the table. So you don't say because this hand gloves is plural. Then you use a as a verb. No. You'll be wrong if you can put it that way. But the correct structure should be a pair of hand gloves is on my bag, is in my bag, or is on the table. The first example reads: a pair of socks lies on the table. The third example reads: a pair of glasses is on the bed. So you can see that after this, a pair of then plural subject follows and a singular verb uh, is used with it. So that is the principle of a pair of concord. So let's move to the next principle, which is one of concord, one of concord. Now, this one will make uh, a lot of errors in our contemporary day-to-day -day construction. When we say one of my friend is a doctor, that is wrong because if you are talking about one of and the, the this person is just one of a lot of people that you have a lot a lot of friends that you have one of my friends can you say it is wrong so this principle states that when one of is used in a sentence it should be followed by a plural noun or pronoun but it must attract a singular verb just like this a pair of principle is for instance, it is correct to say one of my students is now a lecturer. One of my students. But it is wrong for me to say one of my students is now a lecturer. Can you see that? All right. So example one here says one of my students has been awarded. One of my students. So I have a lot of students, but just one of them. Can you see that? That's the uh, further explanation of that principle one of a lot of students that I have, then the verb will now be working for the one of them. But at first, my subject must connote or must indicate that there are many, just one of them I'm talking about. All right, so uh, let's see this example three of this principle. One of the women who sell in the premises has been asked to leave. One of this one of women. Can you say this is a plural subject? Women. One of the women. That is, 
a lot of women sell uh, in the church premises, but one of them, one of them, one of them has been asked to leave or to vacate the environment. So that is the application of uh, the, the principle. Here, the verb sell is used for the women. That's uh, this, uh, this example, when we study further in our other classes, we also make use of this example on the uh, relative pronoun concord, but uh, not today. Not today. When we get there, we talk about it. This example, this example is uh, is is considering two principles at a go. You must consider two principles to get this question at a go. And that is why, if you check your jam and your YEC, uh question packs, you meet this question very frequently, very very frequently. So this, you must, for you to denote the correct answer for this example three you need to put into consideration two or more principles in Concord, then you can get it all right. All right, so let's go further. Let's go further, we are almost ending. So principle six, parentheses in Concord. Parentheses in English language means brackets. So, and whatever you have in brackets, in English language does not have significance in the sentence. So let's see how it works in Concord now. A parenthetic statement is a way phrase or statement used as an additional ex explanation to a sentence. It is a parenthetical, if a parenthetic statement is used in a sentence, then the sentence could be complete without the parenthetic statement. The parenthetical, st the parenthetical statement is a sentence, in a sentence is usually marked by comma, bracket, dash, like that, etc. So the parenthetical statement in a sentence is not usually considered when choosing the verb of the sentence. Rather, mm -hmm. what should be considered in choosing the verb is the statement itself. That's mm -hmm. the phrase, clause, noun, pronoun, adverb, or adjective that precedes <laughs> the brackets. Yes, someone is trying to talk. Mm -hmm. Can I hear um, from you? Yes, that's one of you have like seven minutes. Seven minutes. All right. All right. Let me just sweep through the slides. So, for example of this uh, principle is the employer, not the salesman. Hello. Okay. You should just watch through. If you can't finish in this one, this way. Okay. No, you don't. Need to All right. So let's move. Okay. Okay. So let's see the application of the seventh principle for today, and we leave a collective. Uh, this is uh, titled National Concord. So this one, we can see this in types of nouns where we have collective nouns. But here, the collective nouns are not used with a group of or a class of. But rather, we have we use a word that is connoting a, a set of people. For instance, audience, the poor, the make, congregation, class, club, etc. So in this principle, when a collective noun is performing an action, or seen as an individual items. When a collective noun is seen as individual items that constitute an uh, entity, a plural verb should be used in the sentence. But when the collective noun is seen as an entity or is not performing an action at all, then a singular verb should be used. For instance, example one, let's see here, our club is 10 years old today. So in this example, the club is a physical environment and not the people, not indicating the people there. So that club is an entity there. So you use singular verb for it. Unlike the, sec uh, the second example, the police are celebrating the arrest of Flores Anini. Now, the police here indicates each of the people because they are performing the action. The head, the DPO is celebrating, the IPO, the inspectors, and a lot of uh, police officers in the system are celebrating the arrest. So here, plural verb is chosen. So also in example three, my club meets every Thursday. Here, the club here is representing every member of the uh, every member of the association. So in this sense, we pick a plural verb. All right. So from understanding of these principles, we have practical questions. The practice uh, questions 
to take for this class to uh, to show that oh, we really understand what we have been saying so far. So you take uh, you provide answers for these questions and you send them to me on the platform. All right, uh, this will be the end of our class for today. So uh, in preparation for our other classes, please you can find uh, res uh, sources resources where you can take all the principles and study ahead. You can study ahead before uh, uh, our next class. All right, see you in our next class. Bye for today. Hello, can you? Yes, sir. You didn't ask whether they have questions or not. Oh, uh, I'm considering our time, if the time can okay. actually permit. We have like three minutes. And well, again, okay. And again, um, the assignment they did last time and submitted, you don't mention them. Yeah, yeah. Before I will, I will forward everything to the platform uh, the next class. Oh, better than. Okay, where were you? Hello, John. Hello. Yes. Uh, sure, this is just on the line. Okay. Please, sir, uh, I would like the soft copy of the lecture, sir. It's all right. PDF format, if you can see it, I'm very glad. It should be provided. Okay, sir. All right. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Is anybody with a question? Anybody with a question, please? Okay. If there's nobody with a question, shall we call it a day? Yes. All right. Uh, bye for today. So we, need, we meet in our next class where we shall be taking some other principles of Concord into consideration. All right. See you then. Bye.